Playing games should be fun, right? At least until someone loses an eye, and even that's rare enough. So games in which folks summon otherworldly presences never really made a whole lot of sense to me. Like, losing an eye, or an arm, or a soul is basically guaranteed, so why do it? While I can't explain the appeal of doing something like that, I can definitely list a few of the most popular slash famous slash outrageous examples of said games. That's right, it's time for the top 5 scary games used to summon a demon. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to Peach, Lindsay Ivan's brand new reaction channel. She'll be reacting to all sorts of funny, crazy stuff, so head on over to the channel, tell them that we sent you from top 5, and uh, it'll be launching very soon. Alright, on the list. Coming in at number 5, we've got the Three Kings. Not one, not two, but three kings. That seems like a lot for one game, but you'll see why it's the case in a second. This game is meant to give the player access to a realm known as the Shadow Side. To do so, you have to summon two other spirits into your place of residence. Hopefully they're benevolent, but it has been known to bring demons or demon-like apparitions into homes. Each presence, including the summoner, will then have to figure out who is their queen and who is their fool. It is dangerous though. Like, the person who originally posted the game online tells readers not to actually try it. Educational purposes only, you know? But if you do end up playing Three Kings, it's best to go in prepared. First things first, only play when you're in a sober and positive mindset. Any distractions or chemical imbalances will lead you to having a really bad time. There are some other things you want to do to prepare, but I'll explain those after we go over the rules of the game. Play, you need to set up three chairs, two with mirrors on them, and one in the middle as your throne. Once that's done, head to bed with an alarm set for 3.30 a.m. When you wake up, you have three minutes to get to your throne and start the game. Bring a lit candle with you, one with a burn time of at least an hour, and take a seat. At that point, you want to look into the darkness. Not at the mirrors, not at the candle, just into the void. Stay in this exact position, making sure your candle doesn't go out until 4.34 a.m. That's just over an hour of intense concentration. Can you handle it? During that time, the other apparitions are supposed to be watching you in their peripheral vision through the mirrors, so good luck figuring out who is who. Now, as I mentioned before, it is advised that you go in well prepared if you do decide to play Three Kings. Putting a fan behind you is supposed to blow out a candle if your body unexpectedly moves for any reason. Additionally, you can bring an object of power with you for support, like a favorite childhood toy or maybe a piece of jewelry you got as a gift. And if you want to be really safe, have a loved one on standby to talk with you or wake you up if you're not off. If you go in unprepared, you're going to have a really tough time. So make sure you're good to go and ready to deal with any consequences. Like I said before, the author advises you not to play. Coming in at number 4, we've got Bloody Mary. Who among us hasn't had a horrifying Bloody Mary experience as a child? I remember mine like it was yesterday. My friend had brown carpet in his basement, that sticks out to me for some reason, and there was a bathroom door that only locked from one side. Four of us went in with a candle we had stolen from the cabinet, and we were all very jumpy. I think I was the first one out, to be honest, and I don't think I saw any faces other than our own. My friends, on the other hand, were adamant that they saw her. Bloody Mary. Nothing bad happened after, though, so I guess we can be considered lucky. This is a classic demon summoning game and has been practiced for quite a long time. There are different variations depending on where you are, what time period you're looking at, and even based on who you ask. Generally, the idea is that a person looks into a darkened mirror and repeats someone's name a number of times in the hopes they'll catch a glimpse of their face. The face could belong to a long-dead woman, a witch, or even a future lover, but the consequences are rumored to be dire. If you see a human face, you might be looking at the visage of someone you'll marry. However, seeing a skull could mean that you're going to die before finding true love. Tragic. Then there's the idea that you can summon a phantom playing this game. Many people claim that they've seen bloodied faces, skulls, or even desiccated corpses in the mirror. These apparitions are said to do many things, from screaming at participants, to scratching their eyes out, to strangling them, or even draining all their blood from their bodies. Like Three Kings, this game relies on the use of a mirror in a dark room with limited candlelight. I'm not saying these apparitions are just people's eyes playing tricks on them, but they might be people's eyes playing tricks on them. So if you go into the game thinking you're going to see something spooky in the dark, you might just see something spooky in the dark, you know? But I'll let you all decide for yourselves whether or not it's worth it to try this. Maybe start with just looking at your own face in a mirror in the dark for a bit, and then see if you want to start some ritual chanting. Coming in at number 3, we've got the Midnight Game. 
More so than the first two games we've discussed today, this one is all about summoning a dangerous entity into your home. Get ready, because the Midnight game is freaky. Apparently, it was once a pagan ritual used to punish people who broke the law. Consider that before playing. Would you willingly put yourself in a dangerous punishment situation for no reason? Supposedly, it was just meant to scare folks, but there were some cases in which people were really hurt. Some say there is a chance of death, too. To play the midnight game, you've got to stay up until, you guessed it, midnight. Once the clock strikes 12, write your entire name on a piece of paper and mark it with a drop of your blood. Shut off all the lights, head to the front door, and put the piece of paper in front of it. After that, you're going to light a candle and place it atop the paper. Take a deep breath and knock 22 times on the door. Why 22? Who knows? Just follow the ritual. After the 22nd knock, blow out the candle and open your door. That's how you invite the Midnight Man into your home. So now you've done it, there's no going back. Aren't you glad there's so many steps to get to that point? Once the Midnight Man is in, you're going to want to relight your candle, which means the game is afoot. Your job now is to walk around the house, keeping the candle burning until 3.33 a.m. To do this, you've got to avoid the Midnight Man at all costs. Your candle will go out every once in a while, even if you think you're doing a good job of protecting the flame. If this happens, that means the Midnight Man is nearby. Relight your candle within 10 seconds or you're pooched. If you can relight it during that time frame, the game will continue, but if you fail, you've got to surround yourself with a circle of salt and wait out the rest of the game. If you can't get to the salt in time, the Midnight Man will make you hallucinate your greatest fear until 3.33. So if you want to win, keep moving, keep that candle lit, and make it to that time. Then you can just play Three Kings right after. <laughs> Have it set up in the basement. Coming in at number two, we've got the closet game. Here's another one where you just straight up summon a demon. If you like your closets unhaunted and unpossessed though, maybe don't do it. To play, you're supposed to shut yourself in a closet that's totally dark, hold up an unlit match, and say, show me the light or leave me in darkness. Wait a few moments, and if there are demons present, you will hear whispering behind you. You might even feel an unearthly presence. If you can hear the whispers and feel the presence, it's time to light your match. You gotta do it quick, because if you don't light it fast enough, the demon will grab you by the ankles and drag you into the darkness. And don't look behind you either. If done correctly, the whispers will disappear. At this point, it's safe to exit, but make sure you're still holding onto the match when you do so. But from then on, the closet that you were in will be haunted by that demon pretty much permanently, so have fun. And finally, at number one, we've got One Man Hide and Seek. For our final game of the day, I present you with a truly terrifying experience. You essentially give a doll life and then try to find it after it hides somewhere in your house. And you'd better find it too because nobody needs a possessed doll in the loose. By stuffing a doll with rice, one of your fingernails, and then tying it up with a piece of thread, you can create an item that can be used in this game. You're gonna then place the doll in a bathtub, give it a name, and then turn off the lights. From there, you're gonna wanna take a big mouthful of salt water, turn on your TV, and then go and hide. If you can successfully hide from the doll for a minute, it is your turn. The doll will not be in the tub anymore when you return to it, and it's up to you to find it. If you're a very good seeker, when you find your doll, you're gonna spill that mouth salt water on it, let the doll dry, and then burn it. Get rid of the ashes, and then ask yourself, why the hell did you play in the first place? So you've got the rules, the materials lists, and a bunch of really good reasons to never ever play these games. So, will you play them? What do you think? Are these games legit, or do players just scare the crap out of themselves by playing? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your louder ones. From the top five scariest SCP creatures that managed to escape, Marathon. DMV Lawn says, I want a tag team match of Moon and Ocean Champions versus the hard to destroy reptile. Now that would be a death match for the ages. Jason Epps says, no intro, just getting right into it. I mean, if you're gonna do a marathon, you gotta set a good pace. And Don't Fall says, game over, man. Game over. Classic. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to play each and every one of the games we talked about today just to see what happens. Make sure you check out Peach. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But if you do end up playing the Three Kings, no, putting a fan behind you is supposed to blow out any, nope. Additionally, you can bring an object of power with you as a support, nope. I think I was the first one out, to be honest, and I, no. Take a deep breath, knock 22 times, nope. You better pray that you do, because when you look, nope, and you better, nope, pray that you do, and when, no, I'm not even going to say that, it sounds stupid.